Hi everyone, my name is Matt. Sorry I couldn't be with you today. Uh, Juliet asked if I could record what I talked about on gathering day. So uh, here goes nothing. Now keep in mind, I have no degree in uh, movie production or acting skills. So uh, I'm gonna give my best shot here. Uh, now actually, the uh, I changed my talk this year for a few different reasons, but in the, the past two years, I talked about my first confessional experience that I could remember, which actually happened about four years ago now. Um, I attended a retreat here at St. Luke's, and afterwards, we were all invited back to the church to go to confession. Now, prior to that night, I couldn't tell you the last time I went to confession myself. Um, it was probably at least 20 years. I, I really didn't know. Uh, when the last time was, but uh, I talked about that whole experience, what I learned from it, and some of the natural humor that came from it. Uh, this year I wanted to uh, give you a different perspective. I have two older kids that have gone through for their first communion now, so I thought what I talk about is how my wife and I have tried to teach our kids about the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So I'm going to cover five topics. One is, you know, what's, what is the Sacrament of Reconciliation? What's the meaning behind it? And why do we talk about it during First Communion preparation? Uh, confession, when should you go and how do you know when you should go? Uh, examination of conscience, what's that all about? And why do we go to confession? And finally, why do we have to confess to a priest? And then I'll talk about all the natural feelings like being uh, nervous or ashamed or embarrassed when we go. Um, so a as you hear those topics, they're all really basic questions, right? But they don't necessarily have simple answers. I mean, some of it could be really hard to grasp or understand for adults, let alone kids. But uh, these were all questions that our two older kids had asked us at some point and so I thought, you know what, maybe these, would, um, maybe these would be questions that your kids will ask you, or maybe they have asked you, so I thought they'd be good to review. And also, if you're like me, you either forgot the answers or never knew in the first place, so maybe a good refresher for all of us. Uh, so I'll start with the first one. You know, what is the meaning behind the Sacrament of, of Reconciliation? And, you know, when I talk to my kids about this, I kind of first take a step back and remind them of what a sacrament is. And the best way I can think of explaining it to them is that I, I tell them that it's a gift. I said, think of it like this, you know, this beautifully wrapped present that we receive from Jesus. And that when we open it up inside that gift are all the graces that he provides us. And I tell them that, you know, grace is essentially that that divine help that we all need to, you know, cleanse our soul, restore our faith, you know, give us the strength to live according to God's will, and all, all sorts of great things. And uh, they kind of looked at me like I had two heads. They're just like, "What, what, Dad? What, what is that? I don't really understand what you're, what you're trying to tell me." So I used my youngest daughter, Madeline, as an example. Now, Madeline is the most affectionate person I know. She loves her hugs. And so I told my two older kids, I said, look, you can all, you can see, we can all see Madeline getting a hug, right? But what we can't see is what that hug, which is an expression of love, what it's doing for her on the inside. But for whatever reason, in that very moment, Madeline needs a hug. And afterwards, look at her. She's the happiest kid. She's got the biggest smile on her face. So grace is like that, um, that love, we, that invisible thing, like the love we feel from a hug that comes into us through the visible things of the sacrament. And I tell them, look, in the sacraments, we can all see what's happening in its sort of uh, ceremonial form or how it's being administered. You know, for example, in baptism, we can actually see the pouring of water over a child, or we can see the, the bread and the wine and receiving the Holy Eucharist, but we can't see what's actually happening, happening on the inside of us when God's grace comes pouring into us, okay? So, 
diving into now specifically the sacrament of reconciliation, I tell them that you know this specific sacrament gives us an opportunity to have a, a regular and real interaction with Jesus, whereby when we open up this gift, the graces that we encounter or receive from it are God's infinite mercy, His love for us, His forgiveness of our sins, and the healing power that restores our relationship with Jesus and our own personal deep wounds. And so my kids kind of paused there and said, well, I, I kind of get that, but what do you mean by having this regular and real interaction with Jesus? And so uh, I try to think of an example, and I use my, my grandfather, and I, I said, you know, my grandpa and I, we were, he was one of my best friends growing up. Um, my grandma used to say we were two peas in a pod. We found the same things funny. Uh, we liked the same things. He was just a big part of my life. And when he passed away, uh, I was given a lot of his, his things. Uh, I got all sorts of, uh, of his military awards and you know, paperwork of his, of his family growing up and pictures of him and I that he had up in his house. And I keep all these things visible in my closet, somewhere in a box and it's a folder. And, you know, when I'm having those nostalgic feelings of missing him, I, I go into my closet, pull out the, the box and the folders, and I start flipping through some of the things. And, you know, as I'm doing that, looking at pictures, I, I can hear his voice in my head. I can, uh, I can hear his big laugh. I can recall stories like it was happening yesterday. And, uh, you know, it's like he was right there with me. And I know anytime I feel like that, I can always go back into my closet, pull out the box and folder, and flip through these, these items and, and have that same experience. And I tell them that, you know, that's kind of what this sacrament is like, in that we can go to confession and experience a real encounter with Jesus whenever we want. So, talking about confession, they ask me, okay, so when do you need to go to confession? And how do you know when you should go? And I said, well, you know, the best part is that as we're kind of coasting through life and God realizes that we're, we're drifting off path a little bit, he's going to give us these wake-up calls to help us out. Now, over the summer, we, uh, we went camping up in New Hampshire. And as we got closer to the campgrounds, we were on these, these back roads and there were these uh, sort of speed bumps in the middle of the road that kind of stuck up a little bit. And they looked different, and my, uh, my son Nathan asked me what those were. And he, he knows about the rumble strips on the side of the road, because I always tend to hit those. But uh, he wasn't sure. He hadn't seen these bumps before in the middle of the road like this. So I explained to him what it was, and like any typical boy, he's got to have me hit him. He's got to have me run over to hear what it's like. So he's cheering me on as I'm getting closer, and we hit it, and he hears, boom, boom. And he yells out, what the heck? That wasn't nearly as loud as the rumble strips. And I said, well, you know, that's kind of what um, the wake-up calls are going to be like. Sometimes, as we're drifting off path just a little bit, we're going to get these quieter wake-up calls that we may or may not pick up on. And other times, if we keep ignoring those small ones, we're going to get a much louder wake-up call. Okay? And they said, well, okay, what, what do we do when we get a wake-up call? And I said, well, you know, you, we got to figure out what it means. You know, what is it we're doing in our lives in that moment? Why are we feeling the way that we are? You know, this is the process, I told them, that's called examination of conscience, which is God's voice, you know, the Holy Spirit speaking to us so that we can set things right. Now, I was trying to think of a good example to explain examination of conscience to my kids, and this is the best I came up with. I told them that, I said, you know, you know, Dad's still afraid of uh, Nona, and Nona's what they call my mom. And I said, yeah, how could you be afraid of Nona? She's so nice. He goes, well, she's a grandma now. Things are a little different, but even at my age, I still get in trouble. So I told them a little story of how one day, I got in a little argument with one of my sisters over the phone, and the next day at work, I received a phone call from my mom. Now, she almost never calls me at work, so I picked it up to make sure everything was okay, and the phone call went something like this. I said, hey, mom, and she said, hello, 
And with that tone, right away, I knew something wasn't right. I remember that tone from when, since I was a kid. And she then went through a, a, a series of questions to me, asking, is everything okay? Is there something you want to tell me? Have you talked to any of your sisters recently? Did you say anything hurtful? Why did you do it? What do you think you should do about it? Now, throughout these questions, I was not being quiet. I was uh, playing dumb for a little bit, making excuses, blaming others, until finally I realized, okay, I think I did something wrong. I, I do need to apologize. So my mom was kind of like that voice of the Holy Spirit, a way we don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. She was trying to get out of me that you know what I did was wrong by asking these open-ended questions. Now, in examining our conscience, we're listening to things like that, things that bubble its way up to the surface. Okay? So, I told my kids, now I realize I did something wrong, I probably should go to confession, right? But, but why do I need to go to confession? I mean, why couldn't I just tell God that I'm sorry right there and then in my office, in my prayers? You know, why couldn't I just hang up the phone and then say, God, I, I screwed up. I lost my patience, I got angry, I said things I shouldn't have, and I'm sorry. And the answer is, no, you shouldn't do that. You, you shouldn't be able to have that relationship with God, to talk to Him in your prayers, to tell Him your sins, to tell Him you're sorry, but we really need to do both. Now, if I was going to be honest with myself, to say that prayer in my office when nobody's around, it's kind of easy to do. And am I going to have this huge weight lifted it off my shoulders? Probably not. Am I going to stop committing that same sin over and over again? Maybe not. So what does God do? Well, he established a community for us, you know, the church, to show each other that, look, we're all sinners here. By human nature, we all sin, and we all need each other. But he makes confession a very special, very intimate, and private moment. You know, he planned the sacrament exactly this way. For us to go to his home, actually go there, spend time with him, and say the words. It's the most direct way to go to Jesus. And I told him, look, remember, he already knows what we did wrong. It's not like we're going to surprise him. Okay? So, from there we've talked about all right, now I'm ready to go confess my sins. I understand that I need to go and why I need to go, but why do I have to tell a priest? I mean, it can feel a little, uh, I'm a little embarrassed to go. I, I know maybe Monsignor Mike or Father Joe, and I'm going to see him the next day in church. Uh, and the short answer is, well, because Jesus instituted it this way. You know, it's not something the church made up. You know, there's a, there's a parable that I tell that my I told my kids. Uh, from the Bible, it's when Jesus heals the paralytic and uh, forgives his sins. Now, whenever I'm telling a story from the Bible to my kids, I have to put on my best uh, theatrical performance because I know I've only got a few minutes of their attention. And so I've got to make them laugh, keep them interested. And so uh, when I told them this story, I said, picture this. I said, uh, here you have these four guys that are, that are carrying their friend who's a paralytic and trying to get them, uh, trying to get him to Jesus. And, but they're fighting through all these crowds, and they get through the crowds, and then they finally get up to the house where he is, but they can't fit him in the door, so they have to figure out some, way, some other way, and they go up to the side of the house, onto the roof to lower him in. And so Jesus is kind of sitting back and seeing all this happen, and he's thinking, wow, these, these friends are going to some great efforts to get their friend to me so I can heal them. And so when they finally get the paralytic to Jesus, Jesus says, the first thing he says to him is, I forgive your sins. And I, I think there were some scribes there and they said, wait a minute, what? Man cannot forgive sins. You know, only God can forgive sins. This, this guy's a joke, right? And so Jesus looked at them and said, well, what would be easier for me to do? To forgive his sins or to heal the man. And they said, well, of course, forgive his sins, because you can't prove that. 
You know, you could just say, I forgive his sins, but nobody really would really know. And so Jesus said, okay, get up and walk. And the paralytic gets, get up, gets up and walks. And Jesus turns to everybody and says, the Son of Man on earth now has authority to forgive the sins of others given to him by my Heavenly Father. Okay, so it's the first time that we hear of this sort of uh, authority passing on from God to Jesus to forgive sins on earth. Now, fast forward, Jesus is killed and resurrected and he shows up in front of his apostles. And he says to them, as my Father has sent me, now I send you. Meaning, as my Father has sent me down here, to spread the word of God and to forgive forgive sins of others. Now I'm asking you to do the same, to spread the word of God and forgive their sins. And he, he breathes upon them and he says, whose sins you shall forgive shall be forgiven. So now again we see the authority of, from Jesus being passed on to the apostles before Jesus heads up into heaven. And this continues throughout history all the way down to bishops and priests today. You know, so it's called apostolic succession. And so when we're confessing our sins, we're not confessing necessarily to a priest, but to, to Jesus himself. You know, Jesus is using the priest as sort of a, uh, a middleman or a mediator, working through them, um, but it's Jesus who is forgiving our sins. Okay? Now, if you're still feeling embarrassed, remember that we're confessing to another human being, right? someone who, who sins themselves, who has to go to confession themselves. I mean, even the apostles who were handpicked by Jesus were all sinners, um, but they were not judged. You know, Jesus didn't tell them that they, were, they weren't good enough, you know? And it's funny, I, I tell everyone else my sins, you know, whether it be my wife or my my family or close friends, you know, it's not really embarrassing to me because I know they won't judge me, uh, and I know they're not perfect either, but it feels good to talk about it and get it off my chest, you know, and I know they care about me. And finally, let's say you're feeling nervous, you know, it's, you've been away from the church for a long time, you haven't gone to confession in 5, 10, 15 or more years, it really doesn't matter, you know, God's not keeping score. He's not keeping track of when you've gone. You're no less than someone who goes four or five, six times a year. You know, it, he's just waiting there, waiting for us to come to his home, um, waiting with open arms like we hear in the story of the prodigal son. So in this sacrament of reconciliation, confession really gives us an opportunity to you know, not only better understand God's love to us, but our love to Him. So kind of that's, that's what I wanted to share with you, what I talked about at Gathering Day, and uh, hopefully you got something out of it.